cannabis common sense, the show that tells the truth about marijuana and the politics behind its prohibition. Hello and welcome to another exciting edition of Cannabis Common Sense. Our show is a production of the Hemp and Cannabis Foundation and our affiliated political committee, the Campaign for the Restoration and Regulation of Hemp. That's THCF and CRRH. Mouthful of letters there. Uh, we have an exciting show for you tonight. We have Side Street Rennie, a great band from Seattle. How are you folks doing tonight? We're doing all right. All right. I know you're going to jam here in just a couple minutes or so. Uh, on the panel, we have Mr. Jim Matheson from the Herbivores and the Seattle Hemp Fest. And Tim Pate and I will be taking your phone calls in just a few minutes. Uh, and we have some film clips, including a, a cut from a local television station about our new OCTA petition to end adult marijuana prohibition and restore industrial hemp. So stay tuned for a great show as we bring out our infamous dancing cannabis leaves. Feel the force. Our first story tonight is from Olympia, Washington. Uh, Senate lawmakers in uh, Washington State voted 37 to 11 last week to expand Washington's nearly 12-year-old medical marijuana law. The senators approved Washington Senate Bill 5798, which allows certain health care professionals, including naturopaths, physicians' assistants, osteopathic physicians, and uh, advanced registered nurse practitioners to legally recommend marijuana therapy to their patients. Under the present law, only licensed physicians, or MDs, may legally recommend medicinal cannabis. The measure now awaits action from House lawmakers. The measure is scheduled to be heard before members of the Washington Committee on Health, uh, Care, and Wellness on Thursday, February 18th in Olympia, Washington. So uh, if you're in Washington, uh, contact your state reps and tell them to uh, help this pass through because it will make it a lot easier and cheaper for patients to renew and obtain their medical marijuana permits. Our next story is from Munich, Germany. The moderate use of cannabis and other psychoactive substances is not associated with impaired cognitive functioning, according to clinical trial data published online by the journal Human Psychopharmacology. Researchers at Ludwig Maximilians University in Munich investigated the association between moderate substance use and cognition in a population-based sample of 284 young adults. The subjects completed a comprehensive battery of neurophysiological tests, including assessments of executive functions, working memory, and impulsivity. Executive function is defined as, quote, the cognitive process that regulates an individual's ability to organize thoughts and activities, prioritize tasks, manage time efficiently, and make decisions, end quote. The researchers determined, quote, more frequent cannabis use and more extensive alcohol consumption were associated with a higher degree of impulsiveness. In quote, they concluded, quote, based on mild to moderate substance use, little indication of differences in executive functioning were found in text. Uh, the full text of this study is moderate substance abuse associated with altered executive functioning in a population-based sample of young adults will appear in next month's edition of Human Psychopharmacology. A short news segment for you tonight. So tonight's last story comes from Oslo, Norway. And its uh, cannabis use is associated with improved neurocognition in subjects diagnosed with bipolar disorder, according to clinical trial data published online by the journal uh, Psychological Medicine. Investigators at Norway's University of Oslo Institute of Psychiatry investigated the association between cannabis use and neurocognition in 133 patients with bipolar disorder. The researchers reported that subjects who use cannabis perform better than non-users on a series of neurocognitive tests. The authors determined that marijuana use was associated with, quote, 
statistically significant improvement in attention, executive function, verbal fluency, logistical memory learning, log logical memory recall. The researchers reported that contrasting results were associated with the use of marijuana among subjects diagnosed with schizophrenia. The investigators concluded, quote, the findings suggest that cannabis use may be related to improved neurocognition in bipolar disorder and compromised neuro uh, recognition in schizophrenia. The findings conflict with those of a 2007 study published in the journal Progress in Neuropsychopharmacological uh, and Biology Psychiatry that reported that cannabis use was not associated with a decline in cognitive function in schizophrenic patients might even improve it. Well, that's the end of our hemp news segment tonight. Now I'd like to introduce you to a band, first time on our show. We welcome them up from Seattle, Side Street Rennie. You folks ready? Yes, sir. All right.
this one dedicated to all my friends out there and all my loved ones. Real friends are hard to find. They come and go all the time. Real friends are hard to find. They come and go all the time. Will they turn around and leave you? So as the sun it will shine. Can't have none of that. Just tell me back a yard. Take me back again, take me back a yard, yard, take me back again. Brooklyn town is calling to me. Looks like it's something special. Um, that's a, how old is that guitar? That's a unique. 1932. A 1932 what? National Triolian. Oh, man, that's beautiful. Wow. That's, that's nice. And you play it so well. Thank you. Yeah, Thank so you for being on the show. if you enjoyed that, yeah, you can find out more about Side Street Rennie and at SideStreetRennie.com, right? That's yes, right. sir. SideStreetRennie.com. So go out there, point your web browser at Side Street Rennie. That's R E N Y. Cool. <laughs> and it's not too late if you want to make it out to the uh, the uh, Oregon Cannabis really like Stack Sack Benefit. Is you can still come and see them and live. playing here in the next hour over there at the show. Yep, we've so. got a benefit tonight, the kickoff of our campaign on the Oregon Cannabis Tax Act petition to end adult marijuana prohibition and restore industrial hemp this year. And uh, these folks are nice enough to come up and play a benefit for us. I want to thank you a lot Absolutely. for that. I really appreciate Thank you, guys. It. Thank you for having Definitely. us. Hey, it's great. And then we have... Right here next to Tim Pate, Mr. Jim Matheson, longtime organizer of the Seattle Hemp Fest and member of the band The Herbivores. And you guys have been playing for our Hemp Stock Festival every year. We've had it so far. Yeah. And both of you play the Seattle Hemp Fest. Yes. And you put all your, your assets and life on the line to keep the Seattle Hemp Fest going for many years there, Jim. And we want to thank you for that. Absolutely, That's, uh, bro. And I also want to tell our viewers that Jim does have the longest dreadlocks in the world. Yes, at least. No, no, no. <laughs> Probably That's in Portland another story. tonight, at least. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> you can see him tonight because he'll be playing too at our benefit. It's at 700 Northeast Deacon Street. That's 700 Northeast Deacon Street, just off of MMLK, uh, at the Village Ballroom. You have to go up the flight of stairs, yep. but there it is, the Village Ballroom at 700 Northeast Deacon. Just we'll finished playing, playing over there myself uh, from 6.30, 7.30 with Russ Belleville and John Cornett and, and Kenny Davis and had a nice crowd and, and uh, a lot of folks there. And uh, it's a great kickoff event to, to get the Octo going. Yeah, yeah we're, we're uh, going to use all proceeds from this event. We'll go to get the petition drive going. We're about to launch our petition drive to end adult marijuana prohibition and restore industrial hemp this year, change the world, make 2010 the year we usher in a whole new age of cannabis freedom. So stay tuned. Uh, tonight we are taking your phone calls. If you have a call for us, you can call us at 503-288-4448. That's 503-288-4448. We do have a caller. Hello, caller. Welcome to our show. Hey, Paul. Hey, Tim. Hey, Jim. Hey, How are you guys doing tonight? Good. Very well. Uh, my name is John. Tim, we actually met at the cafe a few weeks ago. Oh, yes. Um, 
And uh, I just, you know, sitting here, uh, dialysis on Friday night again, which yes, I can thank I'm it glad for the benefit. Back. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, uh, but I just, you know, I was wondering um, if there's a, what the issue with uh, organ transplantation centers is with marijuana. Is it because of the Schedule One classification or is it other reasons? It's misinformation mm -hmm. and really bigotry. It's, they, they, like to say that somehow it has a negative impact on retention of transplants. That's just the opposite of the, the fact. It actually helps uh, homeostasis, which encourages uh, our, our lessens the rejection of artificial implants. So uh, it's just ignorance on their part. They, uh, they hold that if you're a drug abuser, you're less likely to to live through a transplant successfully and so they look at marijuana as a drug of abuse rather than a uh, uh, a medicine in the healing of the nations that it actually is so right, right. it's our job to educate them otherwise all the medical studies out there show otherwise so uh, it's simply a matter of educating these folks and that's yeah. what we're here to do yeah i appreciate what you guys are doing and i honestly can't thank you enough i've never felt passionate about anything in my life before and You've you've geared me towards this, and I just really appreciate it, you guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Man. Thank so, you. did you have to go through dialysis three, three or four a times a yeah. week? Three times a week, eight hours each time. Yeah, yes. I see. So you spend yeah. a good uh, spend twenty-four the night, hours spend a week the going here. through that yeah. dialysis, hoping to get a kidney, right? Yep. Yep. <laughs> right. I'm well, on my way, though. <laughs> right on, man. We pray yeah. for you and think about you, man, and we want yeah. to keep in touch too. Please. Yes. Yes. Well, hope I hope to see you again, Tim. Right on, right. John. And you too, Paul. Thanks so hey, much. Hey, I yeah. look forward to meeting you. You know, that's a problem with a lot of folks with uh, liver problems. They can't, yeah, exactly. there's no other alternative for them. They can't do dialysis. They just die. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's happened to, to at least 40 patients that I know of here in Oregon and at least uh, that many up in Washington as well, yeah. where once they test positive for medical marijuana use, uh, they take them off the transplant list, which is akin to a death sentence, at least with kidney transplants they're unable to undergo dialysis but it's really a sad and tragic torture of their families and these people and yeah, that's like one of the many Seattle too, things recently. we look forward to, to ending when we end adult marijuana prohibition amen, amen. hey jim how are you doing yes. this week very good very good so you ready to play a few tunes for us tonight over at the village ballroom well uh i don't see why not right Sounds on like a good you idea know. you're yeah. gonna be playing tomorrow we're down in ashland uh, down near there, Williams. Yeah, pretty um, darn close. Yeah, there's some kind of big a hippie party in the mountains there. And, oh, right on, right. And uh, it's going to be a good thing. That's fun down that way. I, they used to have the or Southern Oregon Barter Fair down there. I used to run the Rock Medicine team yeah. for it. And Rouge. Yeah. Rouge. Right, Rouge right Barter Fair. There, right. Yeah, that was yeah. fun. That, that was, was a fun a show. One. It was fun. Yeah, it I was. enjoyed that I one. Yeah, I played it. Those. Huh? I played While it. they yeah. last. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's with the herbivores? Yeah. We just recently laid this out. The herbivore is playing the 2007 uh, hemp stock. We had real good sound quality, so uh, we put it together. We'll have to figure we might as well record you. That. You know, let's sell it behind your back. Yeah. Well, no, I wouldn't do it behind <laughs> the back. I mean, that's what we're doing here in front of the camera. About, you know, we're not gonna sell it in front of his back. <laughs> in front of his back. Uh, we'll right. see. Yeah, let's, work, let's work out an arrangement. I think between <laughs> you and I, we could work something out. I'm huh? sure of it. I'm sure of it. So if you're out there and you have a question uh, about ending adult marijuana prohibition, restoring industrial hemp, or helping medical marijuana patients, give us a call at 503-288-4448. That's 503-288-4448. There's been a lot of things going on in Seattle recently with the uh, district attorney up there, hasn't there? Right. Yeah, tell us about that a little bit. Well, uh, yeah, pretty much, uh, uh, yes, yeah, Satterberg. Uh, Satterberg said right. he's not prosecuting that's marijuana right. cases and threw out all the old ones. Yeah. That's right. So that, and, well, that's uh, a step in the right direction. It really is. And he said some of the other city uh, officials are at odds with that, and, uh, but it, he's the one that's in charge of that type of situation. So That's how you it, get elected. That's right. <laughs> that's that's right. right. Stay elected. Yeah, and exactly. Uh, apparently with I'm the, sure we'll be voting for him up there, you know. Well, it, you know, the uh, city government of Seattle's working out very well right now. Yeah, I, I must think so, too. Yeah. I think so, too. About time. Now, Seattle Hemp Fest is going to go to three days this year. Yeah, right. we're going that's to a days. huge extension. Uh, so that's what, the 19th, 20th, 21st? Uh, I think it's the 20, uh, 21st, 22nd, isn't it? I don't know. That's why I asked. Well, I'm not sure. So. It's the third weekend so. in August yeah. every yeah. year. 20th, 21st, 22nd? Yes. 
That's right. Pretty darn close. But Look boy. for the crowd. Turn right. You'll be there. Yep, right there on the waterfront at the end of a pier. Is it 77? Uh, uh, Myrtle Edwards Park. That yeah. much I know for sure. On the certain. waterfront, downtown Seattle, Myrtle, Myrtle yep. Edwards Park. You see the Space 71. Needle. Just go downhill from there, and you'll find it. And That's we're going right to be there on Friday, so uh, come Friday. Last year in a two-day event, the they had... Like 350,000 people on one day and about half that the next day? Is no, that was well, the accurate count or is, yeah. that, is there an official count, Jim? There never really was an official count, but uh, um, there was so many people nobody could move. I know. That's yeah, true. yeah. I, and, I got uh, we, stuck. We it made, took me about 30 minutes to go 20 feet at one point. Yeah. It was pretty well, scary. Well, we've made actually. plans this year to, um, uh, you know, run our traffic a, a lot better. We have more entrances. We encourage people to come through the north entrance as opposed to the front of the park. Uh -huh. uh, and it's a lot easier to get in from the north side. Uh -huh. And we That's have three, three entrances now. We've, and it we, runs like a mile and a quarter along the waterfront. About there, a mile it? and a half now. A mile and yeah, a half now. That yeah. Expanded. Yeah. And it's it's yes. five stages now? Yes. Uh -huh. Yeah, five uh, music stages. But mm -hmm. then and we, a comedy stage as well. Yeah, comedy stage. And we have uh, uh, dance safe uh, techno mm -hmm. stages uh, uh -huh. right. also. In the symposium with uh, all the speakers and, and also have bands, but still. And 400 booths. The world's largest marijuana protest festival. Uh, and uh, it's a lot of fun. Big so thing. It's a big. Stay it's tuned a big for that. It and uh, I'm happy to announce here that uh, uh, John Trudell, my hero, and uh, absolutely the uh, force behind John Trudell and the Bad Dog Band, has uh, has committed to doing a series of six shows to promote our Oregon Cannabis Tax Act petition. Very excited. So come uh, October 16th through October 26th. We'll have six shows. Of course, 420 falls right in there as well on a Tuesday October this year. April. 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 Did I say October? You did. But we'll, I swear we'll am I at? Straight, it's right? April 16th <laughs> through April 26th. And on 420, April 20th, there will be a show. All the venues have yet to be fully determined. But uh, he's going to bring along some surprise folks and try to help us put together a, a big commercial show to raise money to legalize marijuana later in the summer so there's just a lot of exciting things happening all over very true very true and very we've got hemp stock here in portland coming up too it's that's right the second weekend in september and national normal is going to have show. their national conference here in conjunction with this year's hemp stock festival mm -hmm. so they'll be meeting uh their national conferences september uh 9th 10th and 11th and our hemp stock festival september 11th and 12th Speaking of National Normal, uh, it was announced today that Madeline Martinez is, for the second time, the uh, High Times Activist of the Month. Oh, all right. For this, this coming month and the coming issue. And also the Cannabis Cafe was also uh, featured in this uh, recent issue of High Times Magazine. So we've got, it uh, seems like a lot of things are happening from this point of view. Hey, we have a phone call. Welcome to our show, caller. Hi, uh, I just wanted to uh, call and uh, congratulate you guys for how great of a, a job you're doing getting the awareness out there for uh, mm -hmm. cannabis. Yeah, and, thank you. Uh, you. Keep trying. Yeah, definitely. And um, uh, I just wanted to uh, mention um, if you knew any uh, further information <laughs> on, I had heard um, less than a year ago that, uh, that there was a study done um, on cannabis in test suits related to cancer cells, and uh, I heard that uh, that it, the study was done uh, by I think a Harvard University professor, and uh, they found that uh, that it eliminated only cancer cells and no other cells. Yeah, yeah, there are Would a lot you, of studies uh, that have come out over the past uh, five to ten years that show that cannabis selectively targets cancer cells and kills them while leaving healthy cells uh, alone. And right, that and uh, cannabis, the different uh, cannabinoids, THC and CBD, work synergistically better than one or the other. Just pure THC doesn't work, or pure CBD doesn't work as well as in a, a whole cannabis extract in yeah. uh, stopping cancer. They've also shown that if you smoke marijuana, you're about 25% less likely to get lung cancer than if you never smoked anything at all. And if mm -hmm. you smoke tobacco and marijuana, you're only slightly more likely to get lung cancer than someone who never smoked anything at all. So it uh, definitely has a, 
can anti cancer effect. And, uh, yeah, and and and, uh, and the problems with uh, with with that is that there's there's a lot of, uh, of of people in the in the movement that that uh, that totally reject the idea that it can cure cancer or that it has any effect of of relieving um, you know treating cancer. And so, well, for anyone like who my thinks that, I would recommend you go to YouTube and type in Rick Simpson. Mm -hmm. Our run yeah, that's from the what cure. I tell them every time. And yeah. talks about uh, the benefits of uh, uh, curing cancer in stage four and stage five cancer patients, yep. which is and, and, almost and, unheard of. Yeah, and my uncle is literally a chemist who, uh, who, 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 when I was up there last time, was doing tests on um, on peat bog. I don't know if you know a, a, a peat, like Irish peat bogs, where yes. they, uh, yeah. like, kind of a, like a communal, a, 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 it's just a bunch of stuff that's kind of there over time, and it's yeah, like a buildup of organic material yeah, that yeah. doesn't well, they really were, fully compost under uh, the acidity yeah. and peat. Well, they were doing tests. He was doing tests on that, um, and and saying they were, he was trying to find because um, there had been histor history um, about the locals thinking that it had properties of healing, and doing stuff with that. Well, he you know it was was all on that for about a couple of years. Mm -hmm. So then. Uh, you know, just a few months ago, I talked to him about cannabis, and and he literally threw me under the bus like it was some snake oil. Mm -hmm. After he was trying to test for some some you know healing properties of dirt. So I mean, it's really it's <laughs> well, really annoying. Why don't you go the internet and find those articles and uh, uh, turn them into them? You know, we we uh, I've read yeah. articles numerous times over the past couple of months alone that talked about uh, the anti-cancer properties of of cannabis. So yeah, I know. You can definitely. Thing. Refer to that, and I'll tell you, all the major pharmaceutical companies in the world are trying to patent uh, extracts from cannabis, says our yeah. old friend, uh, the father of modern medical marijuana in America, Dr. Todd Micaria, used to say it's monomolecular madness that they keep thinking they'll just patent this one special molecule. And these studies have shown that whole cannabis synergistically works better together than uh, the individual components. And so, yeah. But the scientists are studying it to see what fortune they can make uh, for the pharmaceutical industry. Yeah, well, if you want to look at the pharmaceutical industry, uh, you can look directly at FDR or the Delano part of FDR and, and look to the opium, biggest opium uh, importers in the history of the United States is the Delano family. And guess when uh, the Marijuana Tax Act went in? Yeah. Right around uh, Delano. There, there's a whole <laughs> slew of different... Uh, corporate interests that came to bring us marijuana prohibition, primarily petrochemical industry and many others, but, you know. Yeah, the wood and cotton and, and yeah. all, all of that. Yeah, I, I just wanted hurts, to, uh, to let everyone, melon. you know, know that well, I appreciate they, they your call. definitely look out there. And, there's, and, and also I'd like to let you know that there's a, um, a cannabis or a medical uh, marijuana, quote-unquote, um, uh, clinic over by um, in the Hollywood district that uh, that will not um, tell will, that has told all of the people that I have sent in there that that uh, and I was trying to send them all to you guys' place, but since my grandma lived literally a couple blocks away from this one, she decided to go to that one. Well, they told her that it had no cannabis relieving tre treating qualities, and so maybe you guys should give them those people down there a call because they obviously are feeding out the wrong information to people who are definitely in need of uh, of the right treatment of the right medication. All right. Well, thank you. Appreciate your input and opinion. Thanks for calling. Thank you. Yeah. yeah I, hope but, that, I hope that information gets out to them too. Yeah, we can hope. So, if you're out there with a question or comments, you can call us at five zero three two eight eight forty four forty eight. That's five zero three two eight eight forty four forty eight. I want to give a shout out to Javier and Mark in San Diego. Uh, hey. We'll see you guys soon. Uh, just personal shot. There we go. There you go. <laughs> So we have a film clip that uh, comes from the local news we're going to run. We'll be back to take your calls, questions, and comments here shortly, so stay tuned. We continue now with a K2 on your side investigation. State budgets in Oregon and Washington face gaping holes. Once again, the idea is being floated to legalize and tax marijuana to generate some more money. But how much do our, does our state stand to gain if that happens, and what are the risks? Anna Song investigates in this K2 special report, Pot of Gold. It's like another world, the Cannabis Cafe in Northeast Portland, where medical marijuana users gather to take their medicine daily in more ways than I ever knew existed. And the only thing I do is press it to my mouth, 
There's the vaporizer method. This is total THC, no carcinogenics, none of that. Peppermint infused capsules. Ooh. I hope you don't mind me. That's fragrant. <laughs> Even pot in a liquid form that apparently goes well with tea. So just like a teaspoon then? Actually, I would put two. These people are all here legally doing what is illegal for the rest of us. And that's something Madeline Martinez wants very much to change. She's Oregon's executive director for the national organization pushing to reform marijuana laws. And with public budgets hurting for money, she sees a golden opportunity to convince people that legalizing marijuana could be a good thing after all. Why don't we capture the revenue that's just being lost to the criminal market in many regards and bring it to the people? We're the ones who deserve it. Her group estimates the Oregon Cannabis Tax Act, if passed by voters, would generate $140 million a year in revenue, 90 percent of which would go to the state's general fund, the rest primarily to drug drug abuse treatment program. We could create Canacare in the state of Oregon. Canacare? Canacare, because we would be paying for cannabis money used for, can for, can for health care. We were uh, nine billion dollars in the hole. All that money talk is what Washington State Representative Mary Lou Dickerson says inspired her to propose a law permitting the selling of pot at liquor stores with a 15 percent tax. By legalizing marijuana and taxing it in Washington, you could raise how much money? Well, uh, I think eventually we could raise somewhere in the neighborhood of $300 million a year. That's a lot of money, uh, and we could use every cent of that uh, for drug and alcohol treatment and prevention. Representative Dickerson acknowledges that proposing this for her is a low political risk, considering where she lives just walks away from Seattle's Green Lake Park, a district known as progressive. The big surprise to me was that people all over the state are coming out out of the woodwork and they're saying, hey, you go, Mary Lou. We think that uh, marijuana should be legalized. To me, it's an unrealistic presumption. Dan Harmon's one of the more outspoken critics of marijuana legalization in Oregon. He's the executive vice president of Hoffman Construction, a company that refuses to accept medical marijuana users as employees. We all, I suppose, knew uh, that was really a Trojan horse for legalization, and I think that's really what it's become. He argues making legalization work is based on a mistaken assumption that the people growing it now will allow themselves to be taxed. To me, it's akin to saying, I grow tomatoes and you're going to tax tomatoes uh, in my backyard. Uh, am I going to voluntarily disclose I'm raising tomatoes and pay a tax to you. Legalization, according to Chris Gibson, one of Oregon's top anti-drug trafficking officials, does nothing to reduce the criminal element for marijuana. The Mexican drug cartels, for example, that have been growing it in our national forests for years. They're going to be able to undercut that price, and there's still going to be a black market out there for marijuana grown by them. It's going to come in cheaper. Who do you think people are going to go to? The tax product? Um, most are the cheaper, more um, potentially more potent version. Who will have the final say? In Washington, the lawmakers. In Oregon, the voters. And ultimately, if either effort passes, the federal government, which still sees this as much more than a plant. Marijuana, um, despite so let's wait what it tells you, is still an illegal drug. Representative Mary Lou Dickerson's bill was recently voted down in the Washington House, but a Senate version which simply decriminalizes pot is still in the works. Additionally, one of the key arguments in support of legalizing marijuana is the legalization of alcohol and how states have managed to tax and regulate that. We'll look at that. All right, so that was from KATU-TV, and they uh, looked at marijuana. I tell you, if those guys are... Our opposition, we've been blessed. The one guy started his talk out with, it's an illicit presumption. What does that mean? That has no English meaning. An very illicit presumption. Yeah. That means he, an illegal thought. It's something It's an illegal thought. That's <laughs> what this guy was saying. The other guy was saying that marijuana is going to be more expensive uh, in stores than it would be legalized. Uh, you know, it's, it's really ridiculous. Marijuana is definitely going to be a lot cheaper when it's legal than it is today. The stuff grows on trees, you know. Farmers aren't going to be getting uh, $4,000 or even $2,000 for each pound. The pound price will come way down. 
I can see medical patients getting it for ten dollars an ounce. Amen. I can see patients, uh, our regular adults, buying it uh, at fifty to sixty, seventy dollars an ounce, and the state's still making a lot of money, oh, and yeah. the growers still oh, yeah. making a lot of money. Oh yeah. Everybody will make a lot of money at that. Uh, it's um, just inevitable that the price is going to drop dramatically. Question is, you look at alcohol today, how many people do you see selling beer or making their own beer and Every selling part. it? By, well, right, with a license. And that's how it'll be under yeah. our Oregon Cannabis Tax Act. When they have a license, they'll be able to legally sell it. And uh, without the risk of going to jail, the price will come down, the availability will go up, the quality will increase, and uh, uh, the sales and control of the market by youngsters and uh, people who have drug problems will drop dramatically. So we'll see an age limit that is strictly enforced rather than uh, have to go to teenagers to try to buy marijuana. I so. bet you the incidence of alcoholism and other problems with alcohol will reduce dramatically Oh, it as will. Well. It will. You know, you hear uh, things with people who are using cocaine and heroin say they wouldn't use those if they could get marijuana. Right. People who use alcohol the same, they wouldn't use it if they could get marijuana. So uh, marijuana is a lot less harmful to the system. And we shouldn't be driving our kids to drink uh, by telling them lies about marijuana, which is obviously a lot healthier and a lot safer oh, yeah. than alcohol. Oh, so yeah. marijuana is safer than alcohol, and the time's come to completely legalize it. So <laughs> that's what we're about. Amen. Anyway, uh, if you have a question for us tonight, give us a call at 503-288-4448. We do have a caller. Hello, caller. You're on the show. Hi. Um, I, I wanted to call to ask um, about a primary physician. Mm -hmm. We're in the pro we were in the process of switching my son to a different primary, uh -huh. and in that process, the primary that we were seeing gave him the ultimatum of either his his pain medication or his medical marijuana. It, is that possible for her to? to well, the doctor can do what they want in terms of treatment and treating patient, but you can uh, definitely look around for another doctor that doesn't uh, uh, dis discriminate against marijuana and medical marijuana use there are a lot of okay. doctors out there like that recommend looking into integrated medicine there's a whole new field of medicine called integrated medicine that looks at all modalities of medicine and most practitioners of integrated medicine uh will uh not turn none of them would turn you away for using medical marijuana so i recommend you go out there and look for that type of uh environment Okay, well, he does got a he does got a doctor that that does prescribe him mm -hmm. his mm -hmm. medical marijuana. Good, but he's got, he's, he's a primary for a for a totally separate thing. Mm -hmm. I see, mm -hmm. I see. Well, I, I would just say the fellow who uh, is threatening uh, and demanding that ultimatum is a uh, guy you probably want to uh, not put give your money to. Find another doctor instead of that one. Great. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, it's You're a welcome. shame you can't educate him, though, you know, but some of them just don't want to be educated. They just want to do what they do. Yeah, there's no doubt about that. You but in, in Oregon, how many doctors are now available who are willing to write a prescription? I know that Over 3,000 yeah, of the 8,500 doctors. I think it's close to 3,400, 3,500 doctors yeah. out of 8,500. So roughly more than one out of three doctors have recommended medical marijuana. Closing in on, yeah. on half. Yeah, exactly. So, you know, you're bound to find one. You are, even in yeah. the same field that that person is practicing in. And you might ask a medical marijuana practitioner uh, at one of the specialty clinics who they could recommend. Might be able to steer you in the right direction. You know, if you're out there and you have one of the conditions that qualifies for medical marijuana, where it be, whether it be chronic pain, which is the largest single condition that people qualify for, or a seizure disorder like epilepsy, spastic disorder like multiple sclerosis or Tourette's or asthma, a gastrointestinal ailment that causes severe nausea and pain like IBS, Crohn's disease, and GERD, or glaucoma, cancer, uh, and uh, uh, things that cause wasting syndrome, and AIDS. If you have any of those conditions, you definitely qualify for medical marijuana, and we have doctors all over the United States who can help you. Just call us. Our toll-free number is 1-800-723-0188. That's 1-800-723-0188. If you're here in the Portland area, you can call us at 503-235-4606. That's 503-235-4606. And uh, we'll be happy to help you find a doctor anywhere throughout the whole USA, coast to coast now. Now, you're traveling some this week, aren't you? I am going to Montana and Denver this week, and next week, Providence, Rhode Island, and oh, right on. Uh, Detroit, Michigan. 
Now, is this your first a, trip to Rhode Island? Yes, it is. It's going to be the first trip to Rhode Island. We're going to open up a clinic there next month. Excellent. So Congratulations. I'm looking forward to that. we got a doctor in place, and we're ready to roll. we got a new doctor ready to start in Montana as well. So right that's on. a great now, what are the rule, what are the What's uh, Rhode Island like? What are their laws like? Uh, it's a uh, pretty friendly medical marijuana state. In fact, they've just moved to license three state. Uh, regulated compassion centers so that oh, they good. can legally offer marijuana in three different locations. And Rhode Island such a small state. Right. It's about 70 miles by 80 miles mm -hmm. that uh, uh, they can get to those wherever they are throughout the state. About the size of Lane County. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> hey, we have another caller. Hello, caller. You're on the show. Hi. Uh, I'm a new member, and I come to the meeting there last month, and I was told that I should... Uh, I haven't been able to get no plants or anything. Mm -hmm. In other words, I haven't I haven't been able to get any marijuana to help me with my problem, and mm -hmm. I wonder how I can go about getting it. Uh, good to question. Do. Tomorrow, in fact, there will be a meeting. There uh, is uh, one. Of, you're, you're saying you're a member of the Oregon Normal yes. uh, organization, cool. and they have a a meeting where they try to give away free plants and free medicine mm -hmm. on the second and fourth Saturdays of uh, of every month. Yeah, the second and fourth Saturdays. And it's in the same place our benefit is tonight uh, at 700 Northeast Deacon Street. If you're going to go to the benefit on Saturdays, you want to be there about 11 a.m. They do close and lock the doors at a, shortly after 11.30. So you want to be there before they close and lock the doors. Mm -hmm. And so okay, then like uh, I think they'll have some medicine to give away tomorrow. I know they'll have some plants. I'm not sure they'll have enough plants for everybody who needs one. But I would just recommend going back. You know, if you're a member, you, it doesn't cost anything extra to go back uh, to each one of those twice a month. Also, ask people in the audience if they can help you get a plant and trade phone numbers because if they don't have one there today, they could probably get one to you sometime soon. Mm -hmm. so and we at, at THCF are in the process of trying to increase our, our clone production so we can give away baby plants to patients as well. We'll be uh, giving away some medicine at the Oregon Normal meeting tomorrow as well. Yeah, we plan on going there tomorrow, too, Good. but I'm just wondering if I should have showed up at 9 o'clock. Like, no, as long as you're there me. between 11 and 11.30, you're just fine. Yeah, you are. Okay. Okay, and thank you so much. Of I love course. your show. Oh, thank oh you. thanks for watching. Uh -huh. Yeah, just don't be after uh, 11.45 or so. You won't get in right. after that. Wait a minute. I'm, you, it's the second and fourth Saturday of every That's month? Correct. Exactly. That's correct. Exactly. Second and fourth Saturday. Oh, we thought it was on the second Saturday. Initially it was, and about a year ago they added the fourth Saturday as well. Oh, cool. Okay, yeah. thanks a lot. Very good. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Bye. That doubles the amount of That's opportunities true. for patients to go there. Yeah. And there's also downstairs the Cannabis Cafe. I know that Oregon Normal coordinates that, and they yeah. have additional uh, requirements to go there. But you can find out more by contacting them about that. Yeah, and true, and Madeline uh, brought up again today that they, they would always appreciate if you have any excess. I know in this state, the state of Oregon, we are very generous in that we are allowed to have at least 24 ounces on our Oregon our and state. Washington have the yeah. largest quantities allowed in the United States, but 24 ounces. Even having that much is too patient. much, and uh, you know some people have too much. And so if you do have excess, uh, as you know, we are uh, we're, we're we're happy to, to receive it at the Cannabis Cafe and share it with everybody else there. Just like, like that lady you just long. called. That's correct. So uh, uh, we have a little calendar over here. Maybe we'll get camera oh, yeah. two. That's or beautiful. Three. There it is. Yeah, we've got some calendars we've been developing. Gorgeous. Uh, those are yeah, a couple bud shots. They've been derided by some as can of porn, but uh, I think that uh, they're quite beautiful indeed. The feminine form is... Uh, those are definitely, beautiful. definitely. Uh, they look nice. Yeah, the female flowers of the cannabis plant, and, along with a nifty calendar. I know. Multi-use. It's true. It's true. So anyway, well, we are going to make some major changes this year, and in fact, all the way across the West Coast. Uh, yeah, the law in Oregon, Oregon and California, California has already made the ballot. That's the, right. Uh, tax and regulate 2010 in California has turned in over 700,000 signatures. So there's definitely going to be a vote in California this year. We're working on our Oregon Cannabis Tax Act. Uh, Democracy Resources is the company that we've got working on that. And they have never failed to put an initiative on the ballot in go. dozens of tries, including the uh, growth in the minimum wage and uh, uh, help. They've helped in many different ways, but a lot of different uh, uh, initiatives that they've uh, put out there, mainly progressive ones. They're also the only petition company that's unionized. It's part of the service mm -hmm. workers union. Mm -hmm. 
And uh, so they're working on that. And then up in Washington, there's a new group called Sensible Washington that's working on a new initiative there to end adult marijuana prohibition. So we could see a vote up and down the West Coast. And farther up, uh, uh, we'd like to say howdy to the folks in Ketchikan and Grizz up there. Uh, we've heard you're, you're watching tonight. So right howdy, Alaska. Hey, Alaska. Howdy, Ketchikan. And uh, howdy, Grizz. We'll see you back here in the River City. <laughs> no, very good. Always a good thing. We got a few shout outs tonight. I know, you know we do. do, you do you know? Well, we have people listening from all over the country, and it's amazing. But uh, since we went you stream live, thanks to Paul White and his friends, uh, we're, yeah. we're. And all I go over, out there recording over. every show and hey, putting I it come. on DVD. He's the one that put together this nifty DVD that's out, The Herbivores, from uh, live at the Hempstock Festival in 2007. So uh, that's one of the, the many things we can thank. Ico, our webmaster for oh, yeah. things, Ico. Does good work. So we're excited about uh, the possibilities of larger shows in the summer with some really major acts. And, uh, it's, uh, things are slowly but surely coming together. It's a good and, year to be involved in this movement. We're going to yeah. make major changes and have finally the victory that we've been looking for for so many years. And the little victories have been great, but it's time for a big victory. And this is the year. So if you have a question or comment for us tonight, just call us at 503 uh, 288-4448. That's 503-288-4448. We have a caller. Hello, caller. You're on the show. Yeah, I was wondering about, uh, you guys, uh, legal, uh, you're talking about legalizing marijuana for adults. Mm -hmm. and right. I hope you guys can touch up on that again, because, uh, um, maybe, maybe where we would get it or where somebody would get it if it was legalized. What, what does exactly the end to adult prohibition mean? I mean, is that possession to grow? Uh, what is that exactly? Well, you know, it means it means that marijuana is no longer illegal, and I'd be happy to explain exactly what the Oregon uh, Cannabis Tax Act would do. And uh, the ballot titles come out, so the Secretary of State and the Attorney General of Oregon have read through the law and determined what parts are going to appear on the ballot once we get enough signatures. So the ballot title says it permits the uh, uh, cultivation and use of marijuana and hemp by adults without a license, well, and that, that it licenses the commercial sale of marijuana. Well, that's the ballot the, title that explains it in a nutshell. Uh, and it would allow adults to uh, possess uh, marijuana. Our proposal doesn't set any limits on the number of plants or the amount of cannabis that an adult could grow, but it'd have to be for personal use. And uh, if you want to commercially sell it, then you'd have to get a license and participate in the state licensing system. They'd be able to set up bars and coffee shops, much like brew pubs are able to grow their own, and wineries grow their wine and, and sell it in uh, local uh, cannabis growers could do the same. Just as uh, tobacco is licensed uh, and uh, uh, plots are determined, our law, the state would issue licenses and would equitably distribute those licenses among all applicants. So no one big grower or farmer could take advantage of uh, the market and every applicant that was qualified could get a license to grow a like amount. You often think in the southeast, uh, North Carolina, Virginia, tobacco farmers will get a license where they grow one or two acres of tobacco and they make more money off those one or two acres of tobacco than they make off their hundreds of acres of corn or wheat well, or other stuff, products. Probably like the Food and Drug Administration if you're making some kind of agricultural product for public consumption. Say that again? The Food and Drug Administration, like if you were going to be making some kind of human con consumable agricultural product, wouldn't that be like a, a Food and Drug admin Administration well, No, this, this particularly, uh, state law actually, in the case of controlled substances and medicine and agriculture, supersedes federal law. So this would uh, set up the sales and the market. The state stores uh, would have to sell marijuana to meet uh, demand, quality demand. And the market demand would drive the types of products that would be sold. And the state commission that would be set up to run the medical marijuana program would be a group of seven people. And we dictate that five out of those seven would be cannabis farmers that would look at it to make certain that the quality uh, was exceeded, uh, you know, some... You're, you're kind of talking over me, and I can't quite hear what you're saying. I'm trying to say 
is that if you guys, if, if they legalize marijuana cultivation and, and adult consumption and cultivation on a personal level uh, of marijuana, there, there really wouldn't be a need for a mar marijuana medical board anymore, would there? Yeah, it would overturn the medical marijuana program. Well, no, it actually doesn't overturn it, but it would keep it in effect. People were afraid that when, if we overturned the law, and this somehow was overturned by the courts, they would be left without a medical marijuana law. But under our proposal, the Oregon Cannabis Tax Act, medical marijuana patients wouldn't have to get a permit to grow their own marijuana. Everybody, any adult, would be able to grow their own without a license or a permit. So medical patients who had a recommendation from a doctor would get uh, subsidized cannabis. It would be subsidized by adult purchase through state stores so that patients would get cannabis at cost for at the farmer's cost. And the marijuana sold to adults through state stores or the, the kind of cannabis pubs or vapor bars that uh, individuals set up, though the proceeds from that would help subsidize medical marijuana patients. But under this proposal, there are no permits allowed for personal private cultivation or for industrial hemp for that matter. Hemp Pro, uh, hemp regulations would be prohibited under the Oregon Cannabis Tax Act. And the Secretary of State's uh, ballot title says that as well. So I hope that answers most of your questions. Some people like to eat it, some people smoke it, but that, and if you're doing that for public consumption, that there would have to be some kind of health, um, like supervision as far as that the product's healthy and it's safe for human consumption. Yeah, under the, the proposal that we have, the Oregon Cannabis Tax Act, all the cannabis would have to be tested for adulterants and contaminants, and uh, all the ingredients or anything that's added to the cannabis would have to be listed on the package. Would that be an add-on organization to the FDA, or would it be operating independently of the Independently FDA? of the FDA entirely. Sure, yeah, that's really cool. I appreciate the information. Sure, you can find out more by going to our website. It's out there at Cannabis. Uh, taxact.org or that site there octa2010.org will redirect you right to cannabistaxact.org and uh, you can find out a lot more the new ballot titles up there and we do have this benefit that's going on tonight over at 700 Northeast Deacon Street Jim Matheson and Side Street Rennie have already left and they're going to be over there playing tonight we'll be there to answer any questions 101 if you're interested in getting involved in the campaign uh, come on down and uh, Help us kick this thing off tonight. Thanks for your, uh, your question. I hope we answered your concerns. Keep trying anyway. I know. I know. Good questions, too. Yeah. We're down to just a few minutes left, and pretty soon uh, Tim's going to come over here and play us a song as well, oh, now know. that our other guests have gone. Yes. But, again, if you were like that first band, you can come down and see them tonight at uh, the Village Ballroom at 700 Northeast Deacon Street. And uh, go out to their website, Side Street Rennie, Side Street R E N Y dot com. We have another caller. Hello, caller. You're on the show. Hi. Um, a couple months back, somebody called in who was having a problem with mites, and they said they were using rubbing alcohol in water to spray for mites, and then. Oh, about a month later, somebody called in and said they were using baking powder or soda or something in water to spray on their plants for mites. I can't get rid of my mites. They are tough. It takes a lot of work. And I'll, I'll give you what I recommend. I recommend as long as your plants aren't in the last three or four weeks of flowering, you get a uh, clarified neem oil product. Neem oil oh, is I, the I, extract I, from a nut. And that you spray that on there one night, and you've got to spray it very thoroughly. Soak the undersides of your leaf. You want to turn the plant on its side and spray under the leaves because that's where the spider mites like to live, on the underside of the leaf in every little pocket there. Then uh, uh, the next night you want to blast that off in cold water and spray soapy water on it. And then let that stay another night and then blast it off with cold water. Then repeat that process. Uh, two or three times while at the same time cleaning your room religiously with yeah. uh, bleach and, and uh, cleaning your walls and the areas the plants are in uh, almost nightly for a good week or two. And that should wipe them out if you can repeat that uh, three or four times. So, and that's plant? also not using any toxic products. It won't poison you, won't poison the plants, uh, and it will wipe out the spider mites. 
Well, I have been using neem and uh, a neem oil, and I haven't had very much success with that. I have cleaned my space. Um, I have been spraying them with water, and I'm about ready to let them go start flowering. So I should just do this neem cold water, neem cold water every other water. day? Soapy water. Soapy Use water. soapy water as well. And there are some other products out there you might alternate on different items, like Mite X is out there. That's one that I've seen people had good success with. And uh, uh, But I would recommend neem, soapy water one night, soapy water the next night, plain water the next night. Do that three or, or four times, and you'll really uh, lower or uh, wipe them out altogether. And even when they're flowering. You don't want to use the neem three weeks into flowering because it'll give your flowers a taste of neem, and you don't really want that. Uh, you want to taste the flowers for what they are. So you don't want to uh, use the neem at that period. If you're in the last three weeks of flowering, I recommend that you use uh, soapy water and then uh, capsicum or pepper extract, the spicy stuff out of peppers. Spray that on there instead of neem in that alter, you know, one night. The, the spider mites, depending on the heat and humidity, can breed very quickly, so they're, they're difficult to wipe out. They're insidious indoors. Outdoors, other insects eat them and keep them in check, but indoors, uh, they get out of control because nothing else can fly through the air like those tiny microscopic spider mites. I appreciate your show, you guys. Thank have you. We're down night. to just a couple minutes, so we're going to have to cut it off there. I thank you for your call and your question. If you're out there, you have any other calls or questions, uh, give us a call. There's our toll-free number, 1-800-723-0188. We have a physician referral service we'd be happy to help you with. And if you want to get involved in the movement to end adult marijuana prohibition, you can call that number or call our Portland number at 503-235-4606. We're about out of time. We're going to go out on a song by Mr. Tim Pate. I want to thank you for watching. Uh, we're ready to legalize marijuana. We don't want any more legal lies. It's time to legalize and restore hemp. Good night.